So how do we optimize learning? How do we make it so that what we do in a classroom is really the best thing we can be doing given what we know about the brain? So there are many ideas out there. For example, listening to classical music. Does that actually make a child smarter? The answer turns out to be no. Simply listening to the music does not change anything about how a kid turns out. With one exception, it turns out that kids who listen to classical music might be more prone to take up playing a musical instrument. And that ends up enhancing a child's intelligence. Why? Well, to play a musical instrument well requires a lot of practice and concentration. And these are skills that are useful for becoming a good learner, for being able to, to pay attention to something for a sustained period of time. This is, of course, one of the challenges for all of us in this digital age is how to, how to sustain attention for a period of time because there are so many pulls on our entertainment time at this point. And so this is one of the things that's important to teach to children. Now, the main way that learning gets into the brain is by engagement in the material. The ancient Greeks had noted this, that in order to retain any information, you really have to be curious about it. You need to care about it in some way. And this is the sort of central point that we always need to be thinking about when we're teaching, is how do we engage the students? So anytime we're just telling them material to memorize, it's more of a challenge uh, to, to make them engaged. And so the trick for all of us is to figure out what can we do to make it interactive and emotionally salient and memorable to them. That's the way to get information into the brain. And I think we have lots of opportunities now in this era that we never had before by leveraging uh, adaptive software and other educational games that keep a student right at his or her point of struggle where things are frustrating but achievable and they can level up as they achieve the next step and so on. Um, that's a real opportunity for us to take advantage of that because really the way the way classrooms run typically is it's going too fast for half the kids and too slow for the other half of the kids. So anytime there's a way to leverage the opportunities around us to make it more customized for each child, then that's a great thing for us to take advantage of. And the way to do that, I think, is with software that essentially puts a different skin on what you're trying to teach. So for example, with mathematics, some kid is going to love baseball and that's the way he's going to get into math is by trying to understand the baseball statistics. Someone else is going to love uh, space and the planets and that's the way to get her into math is by giving her uh, some game that involves that and so on. And, and we have this opportunity now instead of giving every kid the same homework instead to uh, say look your homework tonight is to get two levels up from where you are right now in the game irrespective of where each child is individually. So many people wonder about this idea that they've heard that the right and the left halves of the brain are very different from one another and that you're a right brain thinker or a left brain thinker. And it turns out that the two halves of the brain are more similar than they are different. So it's a little bit of a misconception to think that the right and left halves are somehow fundamentally different. It is true that the left half is more involved in language and in fine motor skills, and the right half is slightly more involved in certain emotional issues and things like understanding music. But, as I said, it's really about the balance of the left and right activity rather than an all or none issue. And so when we talk about somebody being a left or right brain thinker, that's probably a misconception that doesn't do us any good and would be better off left to the side. Young brains are the most able to take in new information, to absorb that. But it turns out that that sort of brain plasticity is not just for the young, it's retained throughout life. And in fact, one of the most important things as people get older and older is to keep their brains physically active. Because by doing so, they're always building new roadways in their brain. They're always finding new ways to solve problems. And one of the problems that people get as they age is that parts of the brain might start to degenerate. They start to, to the, the tissue actually starts to die. And so by keeping cognitively fit, you're always building new roadways and you can continue to solve problems that way. 
So it's of utmost important, just like any muscle in your body, to, to use it so that you don't lose it.